Now that you're familiar with open-ended shapes and angle ranges, let's take a look at the other types of sprite shape profiles. If we go back to the Asset menu, go to Create, Sprite Shape Profile, you will notice that there are two other sprite shape profile types we've not covered. The empty profile, unlike the strip profile, has no predefined angle ranges, allowing you the freedom to set up your own. And the shape profile comes with eight predefined angle ranges. For my example, I want to use four, which is sort of the middle ground. So I will start with an empty sprite shape profile. And this way, I can also show you how you can define your own angle ranges. In the inspector window, you will notice that the angle range circle is empty. I can either click anywhere in the circle or click on create range to define a new angle range. Since I want four, each of them will have to be 90 degrees. I can change the angle range start and end points either numerically or manually. Once I've set up four angle ranges, I can now assign sprites to each one of them separately. I'm going to assign one sprite to each of the angle ranges and make my shape look like a piece of terrain. The sprites I'm using are part of the tile set from the 2D game kit. While this tile set was intended for use with tile maps, I found it to work quite well with sprite shape. Now that I've assigned a sprite to each of the angle ranges, I can rotate the gizmo around the circle to preview how my shape would look from different directions. Back in the scene hierarchy, I'm going to add a new sprite shape using our newly created profile. You will notice that this time we automatically generated a close-ended path. However, if at any point you wish to change the type of your shape between close or open-ended, you can do so in the inspector window using the open-ended checkbox. You might notice that there are quite a few things wrong with our shape. First of all, there is no fill texture within our terrain. And second, there are no sprites rendering at the corners of the path. If we go back to our sprite shape profile, we can fix both of these things quite easily. In order to fill our shape, we have to add a fill texture in the inspector window. We can do so under the fill options right here. I will be using a fill texture from the 2D game kit for this purpose, which I cut out of the tile set. Note that the fill texture currently has to be a singular sprite and cannot be a part of a sprite atlas. Also, for our fill texture to work properly, we need to make sure that in its import properties found in the inspector window here, the wrap mode is set to repeat. If the texture is not imported with the correct wrap mode, the sprite shape will produce artifacting. You can already see how adding a fill texture has changed our shape in the scene. It's looking better. However, the corners are still missing. For this purpose, the sprite shape profile includes an option to add individual corner sprites to be used in your shapes. If you look in the inspector window, at the very bottom there is a corner section. You can see that it includes eight corner options for the different locations on the shape. For this example, I will only be using six. Once again, all of my assets come from the 2D game kit. Once the corner sprites are assigned, I need to tell my shape to use them. For this, we need to go back to our editing mode. And for each node which is a corner, in the sprite shape controller options, I can set the corner mode to be automatic. Now my shape correctly renders corners. We can add a collider to this shape as well. Earlier, we used an edge collider for an open-ended path. For close-ended paths, we always want to use a polygon collider. If I click Update Collider, my collision box takes the shape of the terrain. 
However, it's not placed quite where I want it to be. I can adjust the way the collider wraps my shape by changing the offset value in the sprite shape controller. Just like an edge collider, I can then edit the collider manually as well. Let's test the new collider with our character. And it works. I'm going to open a different version of this scene where I've added a couple more decorations. Some of these were hand placed, but you will notice some of them were also made with sprite shape. For example, these wall and ground decorations, and actually the walls themselves as well. This makes sprite shape stand out as not just a terrain modeling tool, but also something that can be used to add detail and patterns to the environment. Lastly, I want to give you a glimpse of what can be done with sprite shape using the scripting API. It is worth noting that sprite shape is still a preview feature, and as of now, there is no documentation for the API. However, it can be accessed from within your project using the Solution Explorer in Visual Studio. First, I'll quickly demonstrate to you how the script works. In this scene, we have a dropship attached to a node on a sprite shape. You can see that whenever I move the node, or rotate its tangents, the dropship's position changes. If we look at the script in the component window of the dropship, there are several options available to me. I can change the index of the node it's attached to. I can also tell it to update the object's position while the game is running. And use normals means that whenever that node is not in linear mode, the object will also rotate whenever I move one of the tangents. I can also adjust the object's vertical offset, which adjusts its position relative to the node. Let's quickly take a look at the script. Here we are accessing the spline from our sprite shape controller, as well as getting the position of the node at the index which we specified. The index also gets adjusted for whenever we add a point before it to the spline. Then, if we choose to use normals, we calculate and perform the rotation of the object based on the tangents of the node, with the help of some member functions. Finally, we add our Y offset, and perform our position transform, which puts the object on top of the node. This is one of the many things that you can do with the API. If you wanted to, you could use it to make your environment reactive to the gameplay of your project. But even if you're not a programmer, SpriteShape is a great tool that provides a quick way for you to create, decorate, and prototype environments with ease. This concludes my editor demo. I hope you've learned something new today. Let's quickly review what we've covered. I've explained to you the basic principles of working with SpriteShape and navigating the features interface, as well as the creation of auto-generated colliders for your shapes. I've also shown you a little bit of the Sprite Editor, that will come in handy when working with sprite shape. And finally, we took a look at what is achievable through the scripting API. If you would like to learn more about sprite shape, here's several links for you. You can find the GitHub repo with basic documentation and sample projects on bit.ly sprite shape GitHub, or you could access it through the editor itself. The API can be accessed from within the project using Visual Studio Solution Explorer. And finally, please do share all of your wonderful creations and feature feedback on the Unity forums at bit.ly Sprite Shape Forum. We can't wait to see what awesome things you come up with.